I am afraid that I don't know how to do this anymore. So this should be fun. Bear with me. But it's good to be back. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel that has been dead for the past uh, seven-ish months. I think my last video was in December or January. Um, I've tried to film videos since then and I just never got them posted. And life has been so busy the past honestly two years but especially the past seven months that I just simply um kind of lost the joy of doing this and it was just like an extra chore but life has slowed down <laughs> barely but slightly um in the past few weeks because I quit my job um and so now I'm home I'm not working anywhere and so I have been itching to get back into doing these videos and so, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, if you can't tell, I am in a different location and that is because we moved houses um, here in town. Um, we moved into a home that um, our, the ministry that we work for owns and so we're saving a lot of money and it just is exactly what we needed for the last few months here. Um, it is July, obviously, and so we are moving back home the end of October, Lord willing, <clears throat> which is kind of crazy. I can't believe our time here is coming to a close. Less than four months, we won't be here anymore. But yeah, um, if you're wondering why I have a crib in my room, it is because the um, ministry used to use this for like a nanny house, and so there's cribs in several of the rooms. So just ignore that. Um, you can see here I have my beloved bookshelf. Um, and I want to maybe do like a bookshelf tour in the new, near future, at least at some point while we're living here. Because when we go home, it's gonna be crazy and I don't even know how I'm gonna fit everything in my room back home. But anyways, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about my favorite books that I've read so far this year. Um, I don't think all of them are five stars, but all of them are, <clears throat> Like, as I went through my list of books I've read this year so far, these are the ones that stood out. And so, we are just gonna start. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. These won't be in the right order. And like I said, I'm not including all of the books that I've read this year. These are just my favorites. But I'm gonna, I have two books that I'm loaning out to friends right now. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get those out of the way so that I don't forget. But the first one is Up From Dust by Heather Kaufman. Uh, if you have watched my channel for any amount of time and heard me talk about my favorites, you know the story People by Heather Kaufman is one of my favorite books of all time. And so she started writing a biblical fiction series um, about women in the Bible. And the first one is Martha's story, um, Mary and Martha in the Bible, Jesus' friends. And I absolutely love this book. Um, five stars, correct? Yes, five stars, 100%. Um, it could almost be a six star book for me. Um, I read it at the perfect time in my life. Um, it hit and the writing is just incredible. And I loved it, all her faith elements. And she brought this story that we all know to life so well. Um, it starts off with the beginning of Martha's life and we don't really know the beginning of Martha's life from the Bible or anything. So it's um, like her and Martha and Mary and Lazarus, their life in the beginning fictionalized and just like speculation of like what could have happened. And then at the end of the book, it goes into the actual biblical events and knocked it out of the park. She just revealed her cover for the next book, which comes out next year. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait until it comes out. And I've already loaned it out to a friend and she absolutely loved it. There, she was crying. I'm pretty sure I cried too. So I highly, highly, highly recommend that book. One of my top favorites for sure. And then another one that I don't have here with me is Daughter of Rome by Tessa Afshar. Wait, yeah, Daughter of Rome by Tessa Afshar. And Tessa Afshar is becoming a favorite author. Um, I actually, what did I rate that one? I think, yes, I rated Daughter of Rome five stars as well. I just loved it. I love her writing. It's also biblical fiction. Um, so this one is about um, Priscilla 
um, in the New Testament, Priscilla and Aquila. And their whole story of meeting, and again, it's biblical fiction, so it's taking biblical events. And from what I could tell, the parts that were in there were accurate to, to the biblical narrative, as far as I'm aware. And, but then just added um, the missing parts of the story. Um, and it's so good. I love Tessa's writing and her faith content, and it's just so good actually another one of her books is on this list that we'll get to later but she's becoming a favorite author and so highly recommend and then these next ones that i'm going to talk about are the ones i have physically i think these are all in the order that i read them I, not that it necessarily matters but yeah i've got a really good stack here <laughs> it's funny the first one we're going to talk about is one that i've talked about a lot on this channel already and that is a midnight dance by Joanna Davidson Politano. Um, favorite author, like top favorite of all time. I don't know, it's something about her writing that just like, it's my type of writing. It just flows through my brain and her faith content and the characters, I don't know how she writes these characters, but she just does them amazing. So this is about Ella and she is a ballerina um, and she has an encounter with, what do you call a male ballerina? Oh, wow. I just like, is it just ballerina? I don't know. Whatever you call the male ballerina. Um, or is that what the man? He's a dancer. Whatever. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, but he, she meets him and he promises her one day. Got interrupted. Where was I? So yes, basically she meets this professional ballerina and dances with him. And he tells her that one day they will dance on the big stage together because she at this point is not a professional um she wants to be and she also wants to uncover the secret of what happened to her mother um because her mother was hurt in an accident in the theater here that she is dancing in and there's a little bit of like i don't know if it's a plot twist but it's kind of like something happens that you're not really expecting in the beginning and i loved it and i loved the characters and I don't want to tell you much because I want you to go in blind, but, and I've talked about it before, but anyways, one, this is a six star book, like favorite of all time. Another book, um, I think I rated this one four stars, but I'm putting it on this list because it is an author that I want to continue reading and I really enjoyed it. And that is The Waterkeeper by Charles Martin. He's one of the few male authors that I have read from, that at least for fiction. Um, usually the authors that I read are female. And so this was a really fun perspective. Um, and especially with the main character being the male and like you're in his head. Um, I don't really know how to explain this book. It, If you've seen the movie, The Sound of Freedom or Sound of Freedom, um, it reminded me a lot of that. Um, it has to do with like the human trafficking and so basically he meets this woman and her daughter needs saving from a ship and it's kind of their story of going and finding her um definitely for older readers i would say um i wouldn't give this to young teenagers i don't think there's just some more mature content i don't i think it's cl it's clean and it is published by um thomas nelson and there's some faith content um not like a super like a big a lot but anyways i really enjoyed this and i'm currently reading another one of his books i barely started it um but he is definitely an author that i want to continue reading and then uh the another book i read was from across the ancient waters by michael phillips um i gave this one four and a half stars i just love michael phillips I just do. His writing, I don't know. It just, oh, this, I guess, is another male author that I love. I love his writing. Um, it just is, like, very deep, deep things, deep spiritual things that he talks about in his dialogue and, and everything. Um, so, basically, Percy is not a good child or teenager. I don't even remember how old he is. Basically, they send him to live with his family that lives somewhere else. Um, and 
They're hoping that teaches him some life lessons. And along the way, he meets Gwyneth. Is that her name? I think, it, yeah, Gwyneth Berry. And she kind of changes him, changes his life. And she's just young. She's a young girl um, that is full of life and makes him really think about things, spiritual things, and just life in general. Um, it's kind of their story. And I don't really, I'm not sure how I felt about the ending. And so I don't want to say what happens. But I really enjoyed it. And um, I think there's two books in the series. And so I'm very curious to see where the second book goes. Because, like I said, I'm not sure how I felt about the ending. And so I'm just curious with where he goes with it. And then a book that I've heard so many people talk about that I need to read. And that is The Heavenly Man by um, Brother Yun. I gave this five stars. I read this for the class that um, I take here. He, um, the teacher in the class gave this to me to read and I absolutely loved it. I was just shocked by all of the things that he went through um, and how he kept the faith and like just horrible things that his he experienced physically and the attack spiritually and I don't know, I just recommend this to everybody and it's very eye-opening to read accounts of our brothers and sisters in the faith who have been persecuted um, and are willing to give their lives. So I highly recommend this book. And then a very pleasant surprise. Um, I gave this next one four and a half stars and that is The Butterfly and the Violin by Christy Cambrin. And so last year, I think, I think it was last year, I read The Italian Ballerina by this author and I didn't love it. Um, but this one, I absolutely loved it. Um, and honestly, it's dual timeline, so I'm kind of forgetting all the details and I read it several months ago. So in the current timeline, uh, there is a woman who is searching for a painting. She is an art dealer. And so she meets this man who potentially, potentially has connections to this piece she's looking for and then they start to uncover the story of the painting and it goes back to world war ii and the concentration camps and this woman who was in the concentration camps and who that she is the woman who was in the painting and emotional and just all the things that come with that whole time period and i highly recommend it and I have book two and so I'm very excited to continue reading that one and then another reread is The Words We Lost by Nicole Deese once again five stars I just love this book it's like such so many emotional things and hard things and then the found family within that so basically it is about an author, or no, no, sorry, an editor who is her best friend who was the, an author, died like the previous like 10 months prior to when the book starts. And basically she is having a hard time even reading the manuscripts that she's supposed to edit because of the grief. And it's just like, she can't even comprehend what she's reading. And so along comes her former childhood lover i guess um they planned on getting married everything but then she left and it is their story of i don't know it just really felt like true family and all of the hard things that the main character experienced and the, so then you see why she acted the way that she did because of that and all the bookish things that are in here and all that. I just loved it. Five stars. I love the characters. Love the characters in this book so much. And then another book I read for class was Delighting in the Trinity by Michael Reeves. This basically just expounded on the Trinity and just like different it went into the Trinity so much deeper than what I'd ever like read about or experienced before. Um and just like the different roles of each part of the Trinity. And I really loved it. What did I give it? I'm gonna give it five stars. 
definitely deep. Lots of thinking that goes along with it. But I want to read it again and highlighted a ton of things. So really enjoyed this and recommend if this is something that you want to learn more about. And then the next one is The Elusive Truth of Lily Temple by, once again, Joanna Davis and Politano. This one, 4.75 or 4.5. Um, I didn't quite connect with this one quite as much as I have with her others, but it was still so good. And again, her writing is just my favorite. So many quotes. Like, I think her books are some of the most, like, the books that I'll go back through and read quotes the most in her books because I just love them and they're so good. Um, but it is about Lily Temple and she is an actress. Wow, this was kind of a whirlwind, so I'm forgetting even everything. So let me just read the back of this one. It is 1903 and Lily Temple is a beautiful silent film actress who spins fairy tales and plays frivolous roles in front of the cine camera. But beneath the costumes and stage makeup is a woman with a quick wit, a murky past, and a tantalizing secret. As an underground investigator to the wealthy, Peter Dris Driscoll? I don't know how to say that name. Has been tasked with locating the legendary Briarwood teardrop. An exquisite sapphire that has been missing for years and which Lily happens to be wearing beneath her gown. In order to stay close to her and unravel the mystery, Peter employs the enchanting actress's help on a case. But as, he, as they are investigating together, Peter is also investigating Lily. The closer he gets to the truth, the more danger they face. And the closer he gets to Lily, the clearer it becomes that he needs her even more than she needs him. So, I'll leave it at that. Um, once again, recommend all her books. <laughs> And then another very pleasant surprise, <laughs> um, which I give this one four and a half stars as well. And that is A Lasting Impression Impression, by Tamara Alexander. I was so surprised by this one. I was not expecting to for it to have the depth that it did. Or I don't know if it's depth, but just the way that they handled situations. So basically, sh uh, the main character, Claire is a forger yeah and so she does paintings like copies paintings and her father sells them as originals and her something happens to her father in the first part of the book so that's immediately there are things crazy things happening and she goes off to a different town and finds a job at a very wealthy person's house but she has to hide her secret and she begins falling in love in the process and I was really worried about how they were going to handle the conflict. And I think that I liked it. It happened kind of fast. Maybe there should have been more consequences. I'm not sure. But she was partly forced to do these things. She didn't want to be doing them. But yeah, I don't love secrets in books. And so I wish she would have just been honest up front. But overall, I love this story. And... I would highly recommend this as well. And then we have a lot of repeat authors. The Roads We Follow by Nicole Dees, book two, After the Words We Lost. I gave this one five stars too. It was so different than the first one, but it was just like the perfect summer read, a fun time. Um, so basically, Reagan is the daughter of a famous country music singer and their lives are falling apart a little bit. And so her and her sisters go on a road trip. But her mother um, had a friend back in the day who would go on the road. They were on the road together, but something happened that they split and hadn't talked to each other. Um, well, this lady dies. And right before that, they sort of made peace with everything. And her son happens to be the driver to go along on the road trip and the story unfolds from there and it's just so fun i will say i don't love insta love an attraction but this one i actually liked and obviously they were road tripping together so they were close all the time but i think she did this one really well and it was adorable and i love her writing we'll keep reading her books and she just released the cover of the third book and I'm so excited because it is gorgeous and I can't wait to read it so yeah another repeat author 
Pearl in the Sand by Tessa Afshar. I gave this one five stars. It was so good. This is about Rahab the Harlot. It, once again, she takes the story, um, a biblical story, and goes back to the beginning of the story, um, the things that we don't know, and she starts from there and begins writing. And the way she did this one just... Like, it broke my heart within the first two chapters. And I immediately felt for this character. And then all of seeing her struggles and later in life after she gets married. And, like, the things that happen in the biblical narrative. Like, you see just why things turn out the way they did. And I just loved it. And also this cover. This is the, not the original cover. This is the 10th anniversary edition cover that I found at the thrift store. I think it's beautiful and I highly recommend it. Five stars. Then a book that I've been putting off for possibly over a year. I'm not even sure but a lot of my friends have read it. Carmen's read it. Uh, my sister read it and was begging me to read it and so I finally did. A Thousand Heartbeats by Kira Cass. Um five stars this writing oh look yeah this is my sister's book but she wanted me to tab it this writing was just so good and the story was so intriguing I've never read anything like this so it's basically it's like set in a fictional world with two kingdoms and the one kingdom is trying to take back the other kingdom because it wasn't originally theirs and you follow the princess Annika and then who is like wealth like her family is just wealthy obviously they're royalty and then we follow Lennox who is a part of the other kingdom who just you know their kingdom is not super wealthy and he is looked down upon by his stepfather the king and is just treated terribly well, anyways they uh go to war basically and things happen. I don't want to say anything, but I loved it so much. And I'm, yeah, I don't even know what to say. That's, that's all. I'm just gonna stop talking about that one, but you should probably read it. Okay, another nonfiction. It's Not Supposed to Be This Way by Lisa Turkhurst. Turkhurst, I don't even know how to say her name exactly. I think that's how it's pronounced. But I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four and a half stars. I feel like I started reading it at a time when I needed it. And then as it went on, I kind of left that season a little bit or a lot. I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. Um, but basically this is about finding unexpected strength when disappointments leave you shattered. And so it just kind of talks about disappointments she's had um, in her marriage and in different things in her life and just kind of how she learned to work through it and it was kind of cool because she as she was writing the book was still going through some of that but just to see her perspective on the way disappointments shake us and the way the enemy uses disappointments but how um god works through them and when we we can find strength even in those times um, so yeah, this was an encouragement and I would highly recommend to anyone who has faced disappointments, especially if you're going through it currently. I definitely recommend. And the last one I want to talk about is Head in the Clouds by Karen Wittemeyer. Five stars. Yeah. This was honestly one of my favorite Karen Wittemeyers of all time. So adorable. You know, all of hers are just a little bit cheesy. We're just going to admit that. But this one was, oh, okay, basically, Adelaide Proctor loves to read. Got interrupted again. Anyways, um, she has been disappointed by a man, but it leaves her in a town where she finds a place asking for a nanny for a little girl who doesn't speak because of just some trauma that has happened in her life and so she goes and lives as a nanny on this farm and 
the little girl just stole my heart and I loved her so much and I loved the characters and I loved Adelaide's character growth and I loved Gideon and then there's some like crazy things that happened at the end that were really exciting and crazy but yeah I think their relationship was is one of my favorite relationships in a Karen Wittemeyer book and so yeah I loved it absolutely loved it highly recommend and also like if it's gonna have books in it like duh anyways that has been my favorite books of this year so far um thank you for watching thank you for coming back after my long absence hopefully the absence will not be that long again because i'm hoping to have more time um but yeah thank you for watching and hopefully i will talk to you very soon in another video